Well, we do apologize for that uh, power outage. Uh, I'll take it again. And uh, the Engineering uh, Partnership Convention kicks off mid this week at the coast, bringing together, among others, policymakers, industry experts, academicians, researchers, trading service, service experts, and engineers. And uh, we are joined by engineer Dr. Johnson Matu, who is a board member at the Engineers Board of Kenya to help us understand how the convention will champion the shift to outcomes-based engineering education, the opportunities for growth, as well as safeguarding public safety and welfare in engineering services. Welcome to the studio, Engineer Matu. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yes, and uh, to kick us off, perhaps, give us an update on the state of aligning the engineering education to outcomes-based uh, requirements. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would like, first of all, to welcome everybody to this uh, Engineers Partnership Convention. And as you said, it will be held in Mombasa Beach Hotel uh, from 15th to 17th uh, this week and we hope that everybody else uh, can attend the this year's convention will be very important in the sense that it provides an opportunity for the key stakeholders in engineering sector uh, in terms of engineering education engineering training and practice uh, to come together and to deliberate on the issues that affect the engineering profession, as well as how the engineering practice will impact or will be aligned to the COP26 on matters to do with the climate change. The SES Convention is also important in the sense that uh, it will come up with policy recommendations uh, that will ensure public safety and welfare in the engineering services for sustainable development. All right. Uh, thank you for shedding light on uh, what will be happening at the convention. And maybe to continue on that note, perhaps uh, an update on the state of aligning the engineering education to outcomes-based requirements. Yeah. Um, some of the topics that we are going to have uh, during the convention will include uh, safeguarding uh, the public safety and welfare in engineering services. We shall also discuss Kenya's commitment uh, to COP26 on aligning the engineering practice to mitigating climate change. We shall also discuss opportunities for growth in the liberalization of the professional uh, engineering services at uh, the regional and continental, including global levels. We shall also champion the shift to outcome-based engineering education in Kenya. Uh, yes. Now, you mentioned uh, the COP26. Perhaps uh, what roles uh, do engineers in Kenya play in implementation of the commitments made during the UN COP26 on climate change? Yes, it, it is a very, very important uh, issue here because engineers do design, they do uh, supervise construction, and they do actually construction itself. And it is important that they look at factors that affect the climate, especially the environment, because any project must uh, be checked to see that the impacts that it has on the environment are controlled as much as possible. Very well. Perhaps what is the technical capacity of engineers in the counties for implementation of professional engineering services? Yeah, I think at the county level we have been facing some major challenges in that there is not adequate capacity. We have gone round the country, we have gone to many counties 
and we have seen that they have not been able to employ uh, pro uh, <coughs> professional engineers who have been registered by Engineers Board of Kenya. And most of the engineers who are employed by the county are graduate engineers. These are engineers who have come from the universities but have not gone through the necessary training and have not achieved the necessary experience to be able to come for interview at the Engineers Board of Kenya and to pass some exams which are set by Engineers Board of Kenya and sometimes our engineers, Institution of Engineers of Kenya. So we have a very big shortage and this is something that uh, will be discussed also in this convention and we shall come with some solutions on how to handle that. And we believe that the county uh, governments should try as much as possible to employ uh, people who are qualified. All right. Now, infrastructural projects in Kenya are currently dominated by foreigners. Perhaps uh, maybe if you could expound, why is this the case? Yeah, that is another major problem that we are facing. Uh, what I can say is that really we have properly trained professional engineers. But what has happened is that this market in Kenya has been opened up to foreigners. And therefore, foreigners have come in a big way uh, to an extent that uh, there is a big competition between the locals and the, the foreigners. And it is a difficult scenario because some of our engineers who have been trained properly here and uh, experienced here have actually gone out of Kenya to other countries. In fact, many of our engineers are working within the region, within the East African region. Some are in South Africa, others in Sudan, and many other areas in the world. And uh, therefore, this is another topic that uh, will come up during this convention. Right, even as the convention uh, kicks off midweek, perhaps uh, uh, maybe how is the local engineering industry being empowered to take up a project as Kenya advances in development? Yes, uh, we as local engineers uh, have been given a good chance also by some of the uh, government agencies some of the prostatos that handle engineering issues. For example, Kenha, Kura, we have Kera, Kenya Roads Board, we have Kenya P Pipeline Company, we have uh, prostatos in the energy sector. They have employed substantially engineers who have been trained in Kenya. So there is a good opportunity that we have had there. Also, we have many consultants who have come up local consultants and they are able now to handle a lot of engineering designs, a lot of construction activities, uh, they are able to oversight and uh, therefore there is a big chance there but still as we said a lot more needs to, to be done. Also the, there is also uh, a, a law now about the 40% minimum local, uh, local portion uh, which uh, has been uh, incorporated in our laws, whereby 40% of any work of uh, construction nature needs to be given to the locals. And uh, we have seen some joint ventures coming up between the local and the foreigners. And those now, uh, that is one way of ensuring that uh, we locals are getting involved. Very well. Perhaps what is the role of engineering professionals in ensuring safety of the projects they're dealing with? Oh, we do apologize for that. And we're back. Uh, we do apologize. We're experiencing uh, some power outage here at the studio. I'll take the question again. And uh, perhaps what is the role of engineering professionals in ensuring safety of the projects they're dealing with? Yeah, thank you. Also, that is a, a very important question. The role of engineer 
in ensuring public safety and welfare in a project is very, very critical. That no design should be done without having those aspects being looked at. Every design by an engineer must have a component of the safety, must have a component of welfare of all the, the, the people. You can imagine uh, a building being constructed and uh, without having looked at uh, the design properly to ensure that the, it can stand in the first place. We begin by looking at uh, where we are going to site the building, ensuring that the site is on a firm ground to ensure that the building cannot sink or even you know, collapse because of that. Then in the design itself, when we do our calculations, we put a factor of safety yeah, to ensure that this building will actually stand. Well, at the same time, we are looking at the economics of it. At the same time, during construction, we must ensure that public safety is guaranteed. We guarantee it by putting fences around it to ensure nobody can enter that site uh, and uh, find construction going on. We ensure that debris that come, uh, come from the buildings are not falling on people. And we also ensure that the workers themselves, who are very critical, have the safety gear, the PPEs, to ensure that also they do not have a problem uh, with the issue of safety. So these are some of the things that are very important. We also make sure that workers are trained to ensure that there is safety uh, around them. All right. Thank now, you. perhaps how is the policy environment supporting engineering in Kenya and how is the streamlining of engineering profession doing? The, 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 the policy, the policies uh, that govern uh, the engineering are uh, doing very well. Uh, first of all, we have the Engineers Act of uh, 2011, which uh, was <coughs> uh, launched in uh, 20, 2013. The other act was in, uh, 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 we were transitioned in 2012, and that act merely dealt with the issues of uh, registration of engineers. But the new act is quite broad-based. It has given engineers board uh, a chance to ensure even the engineering education uh, and engineering training and engineering practice is regulated by the board. So it has opened up uh, opportunities and also it has given us a, a chance to ensure to to go uh, to ensure that we are also compliant with the uh, international laws as well governing engineering and therefore that is a very good opportunity so that we can ensure that our engineers when they are trained here are able to work across the board, they can go to uh, within the region and be accepted because of the training, the education they have had and the practice that uh, they are having here. So when it comes to the Engineers board of, uh, board of Kenya and the Act itself, I think we are quite comfortable uh, with it. We also had some other engineers rule of 2019 which, you know, uh, spelt out very, very clearly uh, the areas that uh, the EBK uh, would uh, handle. Yes, thank you. All right, uh, perhaps before we wind up, uh, how is the engineer's body working with the Commission of University Education to align, uh, to align engineering courses to markets uh, needs to avoid graduates being stranded due to lack of jobs? Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, that is another area whereby the engineer's board of, of Kenya is, uh, has been working very 
very very hard uh, to ensure that uh, the education programs within the universities are properly accredited uh, accredited uh, to, to ensure that uh, those programs are acceptable and they are not only acceptable uh, but also uh, acceptable to the industry itself. So what, whoever is, uh, comes from the university is able to directly uh, go to uh, the industry out there and be accepted. And therefore, we have been having collaboration with the Commun Com uh, Commission of University Education, but you know, of course, there is a, a small issue that is still to be handled, whereby the Commission of University Education uh, has been given the sole mandate of accrediting the, uh, the, the programs at the university. But we are in discussion whereby we are, we, we are looking at a, an MOU between us and the university, uh, Commission of University Education to allow us to at least advise them and also uh, ensure that those uh, programs at the university are acceptable not only here locally but also internationally because if it is if it is not like that it will be very difficult uh, for our graduate engineers to find jobs if uh, outside kenya Thank you. perhaps sir uh, uh, do you have any closing remarks yes i, I think the, the closing remarks is the uh, the, what is the future of our engineering. And all I can say is that the future of engineering will only get better. Since we have put in place engage, uh, engagement forums such as this, uh, the Engineering Partnership Convention, that brings together stakeholders in the engineering sector and provides a perfect opportunity to discuss issues affecting engineering and how best to tackle them. And as a board, we have developed key policies such as Engineers Rules 2019 and also uh, the scale of fees for engineering. This will ensure enhanced standards and also ensure the public safety. The board has also uh, carried out structural audits out there, ensuring that all engineering structures are checked properly in order to curb cases of collapses of buildings structures all right thank you so much that was engineer dr johnson omatu who is a board member at the engineers board of kenya and remember the third engineering partnership convention kicks off mid this week in mombasa